On today's show, we're going to show you the importance of updating your software and your printer profile. Stick around. Hey, welcome to The First Layer. My name is Richard. I'm your host here every Wednesday and live stream Saturday night. Today, we are talking about printer profiles and explicitly about updating your printer profiles when you get a new version of software such as Cura. Now, Cura is free and it is easy to download. We're going to put a link down to the latest version down in the description below. So you'll have all of the tools that you need to get up and running with this. Now you'll see in front of me, I have a whole bunch of benchies and I have a whole bunch of uh, calibration cubes. Now, what, what, what I did to make sure that this test was even across the board was make sure that each version that I tested was set up with a stock profile. It was all run on the Ender 3 V2 using some EcoTuff filament from filaments.ca. So it's all the same filament, all the same settings, all straight across the board. Now, there are two benches in here that are not equal to the rest. And it's these two at the end. This one was done with Shep's profile, and we'll take a closer look at these in just a few minutes. And this one was done with Simplify 3D. As you know, Michael from Teaching Tech just put out a really great video on bed leveling and tuning up your printer. And he's got a whole website dedicated to helping you to tune it up the right way. So I wanted to compare a Simplify 3D stock profile to all of the different Cura profiles. Now, we start off with this profile, which is Cura 3.6. Let's get a closer look. Here we are looking at the bottom of our Benchy. This is from Cura 3.6, and I labeled them all so I have them all in the right order. So here we can see that it's not horrible, but it does have some aberrations in it. Now, we've got a little extra light here so that we can see this much clearer and we can see this much closer. We can see here that we had a little bit of layer shifting. And if I turn that into light, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. But as far as all of the other detail, like the arches and the overhangs and uh, the bridging, everything seemed to go pretty well. I'm pretty happy with this. If this was my first Benchy off a brand new machine, I would be pretty happy with this as a beginner. Now, let's take a closer look at the calibration cube. And here we have just a standard XYZ calibration cube. And again, you can see I've labeled it on the bottom, Cure 3.6. Now, let, we'll look at the top first. The top was not bad, but we have a little bit of dragging of the print head. And we can see that by that distinct line that runs from the bottom corner to the top of the Z. Now, if we look closely at the Y, we can see that there's no ghosting there. But again, there is a little bit of ringing. And we turn it to the back, we can probably see that a little bit better. Now, while all of the um, corners are nice and sharp, there was, again, a little bit of movement in the head in terms of a little layer shifting. And that was at 3.6. Now, remember, this is a stock profile. This has had no updates to it, no touch-ups no little um, add-ons or so on. This is just a straight profile. Let's take a look at our next one, which is from oh, Cura 4.3. Now in 4.3, we see that we get a much better looking Benchy. We don't have quite the amount of layer shifting. Actually, we don't have any layer shifting on this. It did a really nice job with the overhangs. Um, even the little portholes at the front where the anchor would go through uh, did really well. The labeling on the back, it comes out fairly clear. The deck surfaces are all really good as well. So we, if we look at the previous one and then we look at this one, we can see that in the previous one, we had some layer shifting. In this one, we didn't, but that's because we updated our profile to the new stock profile that came out with this edition of our uh, slicer for Cura 4.3. Now, if we take a look at the uh, XYZ calibration cube, we can see we have the same results. 
We have nice uh, top side there. We don't have any of that dragging that we saw in the previous version. Uh, we have nice sharp corners. The X, there's no ghosting on the X or the Y. This is nice filament. I really like this filament. Um, and our walls are a little thin, so we can see uh, the interior infill as well. But we had a nice bottom. And we can see that this, again, was Cura 4.3. So now let's take a look at our next one, which was the Creality 4.21. And you're probably wondering, why did I put 4.21 after 4.3? Because this is Creality's version with their own version of the Ender 3 profile. Now, do I think this is better than our previous one? No, I don't. And I'll tell you why. Because when I look at this one even closer, I can see I've got some aberrations here in the front of the bow. I can feel some aberrations around. And that could be zitting. That could be any, any result. Although the overhangs all came out really well. The top and the bottom surface wasn't too bad at all either. The bottom did nice and clean. And in the back there, we can see that we've got just a little bit of ghosting around those letters. Um, and we have just a very, very slight bit around those portholes. Now, is their profile better than the previous profile? No, and I'll tell you why, because this is a newer profile than what they've built upon here. So when we look at this, um, do we want to use the Creality version of the software? If that's all you have and you haven't downloaded the latest version of, of Cura, then yes, you want to use it. Again, this was not done with any changes to the uh, profile whatsoever. So let's take a look at the calibration cube now. And we'll start with the top. We can see here, uh, again, a very nice result. Although we do have a little bit of spacing on those uh, interior walls. Very, very slight. And a little bit of a drag there. Again, the head dragged uh, across the top, which scarred the top of the model. Now, the Y has no ghosting. The corners are a little bit more round. They're not as sharp as on previous versions either. And there's no ghosting on the X. But this is a very nice result. Again, if you don't have uh, another version of Cura and you've just bought yourself a brand new machine, this is a great way to get started. Moving right along, we're going to go to the latest version of Cura. And now this is Cura 3.7. Or 4.7, I'm sorry. This is 4.7. And we can see that this is a really nice result. So when we update our profiles uh, to the newest, latest version under the latest version of our slicer, we can see that we do get marginally better results. So do we have to go to searching for custom profiles? I don't think so. And a lot of people do search for custom profiles. And I really don't think that it's completely necessary. Now, if we go back to the Creality version and we look at those two, we can see they're almost identical. We can see that they're almost identical, except for here on the Creality, we have those, those zitting right there. On the latest version, we have no zitting at all. There's no, this is smooth to the touch. So, does it pay to upgrade those profiles? It sure does. Again, here's that XYZ cube, and again, a perfect result. As far as I'm concerned, that is a perfect result for an XYZ cube or a calibration cube. This is an amazing result. Again, I'm going to recommend that you use Teaching Tech's uh, video, and I'm going to link it again down below. We linked it again last week. We're going to link it again this week. 
um, to do some tuning on your machine if you feel that you need to, but not all the time do you need to. If you built your 3D printer correctly, you shouldn't have any issues in your 3D print. And this is a great look at those. Now, here is the calibration cube. Oh, this is not that calibration cube. Let's go to this one. This is Shep's profile. Now, we all know Chuck uh, over at Filament Friday. Great guy. Um, I respect him immensely for what he does for the community. Um, but I look at this profile and I can see I have layer shifts again. And my text isn't quite as crisp on the back of the boat. And I can see that, you know, the... These overhangs worked really well, um, but again, the top surfaces, not as good. So, do you have to hunt for profiles? And the reason I did this is not to discredit Chuck in any way, shape, or form. And there you can see I've used Shep's 4.6 profile uh, because he hasn't done one for 4.7 4 yet. But you can see that it isn't as clean as previous versions. And, does, you know, what, what profile works for one person may not work for another. So we can see here, again, just raw, just using his profile for a 0.2 layer height. Um, I don't think this is a better result than our previous result on 4.7. I think the 4.7 result was much better, in all honesty. Now, I, I imagine Chuck's going to retune uh, his profile for 4.7. And when he does, we'll have a look at it again. But this one at 4.6, I don't think that it's a better result than I got with 4.7. Actually, I kind of think it's a few points down based on the layer shifting and the layer adhesion, or not adhesion, but the layer stacking. So... I think that 4.7 outperformed even Shep's uh, custom profile for Cura 3. Point, or 4.7. Now, Shep's calibration cube, we have a look at that. We Again, we can see those problems. And we can see there's a lot of layering that is going on and some misalignment of layers. So... The point I guess I'm trying to get across here, there's the top of Shep's. Uh, the point I'm trying to get across here is when you are updating your software, it is important that you get rid of the previous profiles that are there and install brand new profiles because the profiles are tuned a little bit each time a new version comes out. And lastly, let's take a look at Simplify 3D. Now, Simplify 3D is what Teaching Tech's uh, calibration website uh, is all built on. So all of the profiles you're going, or all of the print printers that you're going to, or prints that you're going to do to, to calibrate your 3D printer are all sliced using uh, Simplify 3D. Now, this is Simplify 3D. You can see there on the bottom. Do I think it did a better job of Cura 4.7? Absolutely not. And here's another reason why. We can see in the overhangs, they're not quite as tight as we go around the radius underneath. Um, we can see that here as well. Uh, on the back porthole, we can see that there's a little bit of drooping in the plastic. And again, these were all sliced the exact same way and they all use the same temperatures on the bed and on um, the, the hot end. So none of these were, were far off from one another, if they were far off at all. So I tried to control the tests as best as I could. And let's take a look finally at that calibration cube. And you can see there's a little scarring from this corner and this corner going into the Zs, and you can see that if I turn it into the light just right, you can see there's a little bit of top scarring. Now, as far as the edges go, they're not as, as clean. They're a little softer edge 
than we find with even 4.7. Let's see if we can find that 4.7 cube again. And if we look at the edges of those two cubes, we can see that this one here is a little rougher than this one. This one's a lot smoother than the uh, Simplify 3D. Now, Simplify 3D is a $150 US program. Hasn't been updated in a long time. 4.7, the Cura 4.7 profile or software is free. And what's better than free? Now, Cura's not paying me to do this um, comparison. I wanted to do this because I get a lot of questions regarding uh, different profiles and how do I get the best print. So do you need to update your, your Cura software or other Slicer software? Absolutely you do. When the new versions come out, it's important that you do upgrade. And it's also important, as we can see from the close-ups of these different benchies and calibration cubes, that it does make a difference. And do custom profiles necessarily help you? Not really. They don't. Um, some do, some don't. So now, while Chuck Shep over at Filament Friday has got a great deal of experience doing this, we noticed in his profile that it didn't give us nearly as good a result as we got with the latest version of Cura. Now, straight out of the box, Cura is going to give you a good result. Now, there are older versions of Cura that there were some mistakes in and some backtracking, but in Cura 4.7, and this is why I want you to upgrade today if you can, is to get the best results out of your printer. Also, you want to make sure that your printer is calibrated properly. You want to make sure that you're running a clean head. So clean off the nozzle. Make sure that you don't have anything clogging your nozzle. You want to make sure that your bed is level. You want to make sure that your frame is square. You want to make sure that you're getting the right E-steps and getting the right um, movement throughout your printer. And Michael over at Teaching Tech, the video that he put out, we're going to link that down below and also the accompanying website to walk you through all those calibrations. Everything from stringing temp towers uh, to getting the best results in a benchy and a calibration cube. Uh, a great website and uh, a great video that he put out. I can't begin to go over how helpful it's been to me personally and how helpful I think it's going to be to you. And you don't have to be a pro to use it. You can be a novice, you can be a beginner, and it will walk you through the steps in order to get the best results out of your printer. And it's regardless of what printer you're using. It doesn't matter. You could be using an Ender 3, you could be using a Delta printer. It doesn't matter. It is a great piece of kit to have or tool to have in your kit and be able to go to to calibrate the printer again all of these tests were done on the ender 3 stock there's been no changes made to it we used filaments.ca eco tough gray and i'm going to tell you the proof is right there so update your profile update your software and get printing some great prints for you today okay with that said I'm out of time. So remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. And hey, if you're new here, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and leave a like or a comment down below and hit the little bell so you get notified every time that we do a brand new episode. Now we've got some more episodes for you to have a look at, over 300 in our catalog, and we're always trying to bring you the latest and greatest information that we can that will work for you. And you can check them out in the sidebar here, and some of them should be coming up. So until I see you next time, remember, again, that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. I'm Richard. Have yourselves a great day.